a few departments at Mural Arts. Oh, great. We will be recording this so that uh, we can look back at it and also use this as a resource. Um, so this project, I uh, wanted to briefly um, just give you the background to, um, I wanted to also introduce you to my co-project manager, Kathy Harris, who's incredible. Um, and we are managing this project. Um, it's actually sponsored by the giant company. So the giant supermarkets you, you probably are aware of. Um, and they are asking us this very important question. I'm gonna drop in the chat here. How can we transform our food systems into equitable engines for healthy and empowered communities? Uh, and we are so fortunate to have uh, Amber Art and Design here, as well as Simone Salib, an, another incredible artist, and Ben Miller. Uh, and I think everyone will introduce themselves a little bit better than I could. So uh, Amber, Art and Design, Linda, Kier, take it away. Thanks, Callie. So yeah, my name is Linda Fernandez and I'm joined by my colleague here, Johnston. And Amber Art has been, our, our work has been really, um, a lot of our work has been about food justice for the last decade. And uh, it's something that we feel very passionate about and all the work that we do as community artists and as public artists, we really try and make food a focal point because we believe that food brings people together and food is a great way to share our culture and to build relationships. And so, um, we, what we're trying to do with these workshops is really generate ideas. Um, the first workshop that we had last month, we generated a list of resources. And these were resources related to food access and food sovereignty. This workshop is really gonna focus on how we feed our city. And we'll be thinking again about food access and specifically about people. So we wanted to use this as an opportunity to show how art can, can connect to and speak to and highlight issues such as food justice. Kira, is there anything you wanted to add to that? No, that I'm just really excited that we're all able to convene tonight. I thank everybody for taking the time out of their day and joining us in what is becoming one of the the most pressing and urgent conversations of our generation. You know, it's like nobody in this country should be going hungry at night, but continually day by day it happens. And the feeling is the more that we can come together, convene, figure out solutions, talking to amazing social activists like Ben Miller and Simone and in the community that's present today and just figuring out what we can do as a point of action. All these conversations are going to be generated towards outcomes, and some of which are going to be an advocacy poster campaign, and these conversations are also going to lead towards a future installation downtown near the new giant uh, that is focused on food justice. Um, again, we are Amber Art and Design. We are leading the, the process of this project, and just really thank everybody for taking the time for joining us today. Um, one quick note, make sure that you have a pencil or a pen and a piece of paper because there is going to be some drawing. Uh, there's going to be a drawing activity led by Simone. So I'm going to pass the mic on to Simone Salib, who is an incredible local artist and an activist. And she's going to present and share a little bit of her work. All right, cool. Uh, hey y'all, my name is Simone Salib. I am a muralist, street artist, and educator based out of Philadelphia. Um, I was really excited to team up with y'all for this workshop today, just because like, I'm gonna reiterate what everyone has said so far, but like, I don't know. I just, I think like food justice is obviously such an important element, not just like in the time of the pandemic that we're in, but just as like an everyday thing that has to happen for like the rest of forever, to be honest. Um, I really, really, so I don't know, for me personally, I have such like a spiritual connection to art, but also food as somebody who just loves food, but also someone who shares food, who makes food for others. And I think like when we think about that in a bigger way, I think 
it can be really transformative and really beautiful. And if you have the resources to help people, yo, run with it forever. Um, so I'm gonna share a little PowerPoint of um, some of my work and uh, like who I am as a person. Um, I'm gonna share my screen. Okay. Um, cool. Oops. All right, can y'all see this? Yep. All right, cool. Um, my name is Simone Salib. Um, I'm just gonna like run through like a little bit of like who I am and the stuff I've done. Um, so I started really making art and like focusing on that as my career in November, 2017. Um, this is me at my first art show ever. <laughs> um, and then from there, I kind of like threw myself in to making art in the public space. I was showing work like in galleries and I like really like thought about the accessibility behind that and like how it could be really gatekept. And I was like, all right, I don't know if this is something I wanna do anymore. Let me like start putting stuff outside instead because at that point it becomes for everyone and not just like in one space or in like an institution. So I started making street art that was specifically community-based and worked with other folks and worked with schools. So I started, I ended up like pairing up with mural arts and working with students. And when I first started painting, I, I do a lot of portraiture and I really was thinking um, originally I was like painting famous people. And then I had a moment where I was like, why am I doing that? I feel like it could be really cool to um, focus on making things that are community-based and of people in the city. This is a project I did um, right before the pandemic with some students at Samuel Fells High School and um, the Northeast High School where we did portraits of ourselves. We did portraits of people we admired and we did portraits of people that we know in our community and that we love, whether it be teachers, parents, grandparents. And we did all of these portraits, must've been like 70 plus portraits. And we did this like kind of collage style um, with these pillars where we could kind of pay homage to the people that we love and the people that we admire. Um, and it was a really beautiful experience. And I feel so fortunate to be able to have worked with students like in this capacity and to have them like really understand the importance of like really like paying gratitude to the people around us, right? Um, from there, I kind of like moved into a little bit of a different direction. I wanted to start getting more colorful. Um, and I did this series in Art Basel um, in Miami called Gracias por Todo, which means thank you for everything. Um, and it was really about like, who are the artists that have paved the way for people like myself. So I really wanted to honor different Latinx artists from the past and from the present who are maybe not looked at every day. I feel like you hear of a Latinx artist and the first person somebody says is always Frida Kahlo. And I love Frida Kahlo as much as the next person, but how many people before me have come and really done like incredible work. And um, also I wanted to put something up that kind of had the same idea as like an outdoor exhibition where like you could like see something and learn something at the same time. So I put these little bios next to them about like the incredible work that these different artists had done throughout time. From there, I kind of like wanted to start thinking about making work that was maybe less ephemeral because street art is so beautiful because it has like such like a time limit, you know? You put something up and it's up for a little bit and like you never know how long it's gonna stay. Um, and I was like, all right, I'm gonna start making things in the shape of a square or a rectangle with the intention of thinking about like, what is a mural? At the end of the day, a wall is just like a giant rectangle or square, right? So if I start making things in that shape, hopefully maybe with like a little bit of like manifesting and thinking about it like that, maybe I can do something that could be bigger and could be more permanent. Um, this is a piece on the right over here, um, is a piece I did with a community fridge in South Philly, actually right outside of my studio at Bach, um, the South Philly community fridge at 9th and Mifflin. And they asked if I could like come and help decorate the outside of it. And I was like, absolutely. Oh my goodness. This is something that I think is so important and so beautiful. And it had one up in the pandemic. And I really admired the people that like really like came together, um, to, to make this possible and to like get a refrigerator and get mutual aid funds to be able to like to to bring the bring the food to the fridge every day 
Um, so doing this was something that was really awesome. Um, from there, it, it kind of started to get bigger. And then it got to a point where I was like, all right, I feel like I can start to, to imagine something that can be this big. And then, and then it happened. Um, and then I started like making things that were permanent. This is actually um, a really beautiful collaboration to think about like in this workshop today. Um, but this is a project I did with Visit Philly um, to honor um, different women who we admire from Philadelphia or in Philadelphia. And I chose um, Christina Martinez from South Philly Barbacoa um, just because I really admire the person that she is and the work that she did and does in this city. Um, and I was really excited to make something that was permanent for the first time through this project. Uh, from there, like it kind of kept rolling and I started to do different things. This is the project I did with the Broad Street Ministry um, for a public hand washing station for, like in the first week, week of COVID. Um, because when we think about accessibility around things, what are basic necessities? I feel like everybody deserves to have shelter and a house. Everyone deserves to have food and a place to wash their hands at a bare minimum, you know what I mean? And clean water. So doing this project was also something that really struck a chord with me when we're thinking about like accessibility around things that are basic, basic needs, you know? Um, from there, it kind of started to like really roll into doing like larger work. So this is a project that I did um, during summer of 2020. Um, during the uprisings, uh, I worked with some folks from LA who were doing some really, really cool work um, with projecting giant images onto walls um, during protests as a way to like really keep people empowered and to really see art that was talking about what was going on around us in this world. Um, kind of from there, I like kind of had a moment where I was like, all right, I make work all the time about other folks. I'm going to try to do some stuff about myself. Um, so I did some pieces about like my family and my family's history. Um, my abuela, she's from Cuba um, and, my, and my grandfather, my abuela too. Um, so I made a piece that was honoring um, their immigration story, who they are, what is my family's story? Because I don't, I don't know, I think so many times we see things about people and like whose stories are the ones that get to be heard, you know? And I don't know that, that my grandparents ever thought like in coming to the US that like they would think that their story is something that like is so important and so beautiful and so robust. Um, so I really wanted to take a moment to, to, to share that with people and to think about that being in the airport of all places, like where people are like coming and going and to think that like my family has come here and to be able to like, have this be something that is in front of us and can be shared with people like this, I thought was like one of the most like important things that I've like honestly ever made. Um, this is some more work that I've done, some larger scale stuff. And I'm gonna just flip through so y'all can see some pictures. Um, and then we are gonna end with um, a work I specifically made over the summertime that was uh, on the poster for this event tonight um, that I made at the Women's Studio Workshop in the summertime that was uh, part of a class that I taught on public art and how to make a mural. And uh, the quote on it is to, to eat is a necessity, but to nourish each other is how we survive. Um, like I said earlier, I'm such like a food person and I think food is so beautiful because it can really bring people together in such a familial way. Um, and I've always felt that way. I'm someone that like wants people to come over to my house and like make dinner with me and like, not just like eat it, but I want them to like help me. I wanna like make empanadas and I wanna sit together and I wanna like talk and like, you know, chit chat and share like life and stories over food and over making something for each other, you know? Um, yeah, so I thought it was really beautiful to be able to make something like this. And when we think about like food justice and um, how are we bringing people together and how are we doing that through food, um, I think is really important. Oop. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. All right, so that's a little bit about me. I'm gonna pass the mic over to Ben. <laughs> I hope I didn't go over 10 minutes, I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, cool. Hey, everybody. I'm uh, super excited to be here and share uh, some of the 
the work that I've been gotten involved with the, the last year, which for me has been really some of the, the most like uh, profound and intersectional stuff I've had an opportunity to be a part of. Um, when the, you know, my, my wife and I, we, we have a restaurant called South Philly Barbacoa. And uh, we have moved from a space across the street um, into a little bit bigger space a few years ago. And the restaurant changed hands, but during the pandemic, it was a, a vacant space. And um, there was an opportunity to activate the space and turn it into a community kitchen. We linked up with the, some funding from Well Central Kitchen and some community organizers and um, several community groups, a bunch of volunteers, a bunch of our chef friends. And we started uh, putting together 215 meals a day um, out of the kitchen Monday to Friday. We were working with high school students um, and we were working with um, a lot of uh, purveyors um, who would call us and say, hey, we have you know, um, a, a little bit of product that's really nice, but it's just like one or two days past when I can sell it. You know, and so we would pick up stuff from all over the city from places like Common Market and Share. Um, and, um, and we would use these ingredients kind of like a chopped, you know, uh, on, a, on TV. Like, here's the mystery ingredient for today. You know, we have uh, turkeys and we have uh, these spices and, uh, and we were getting stuff donated from people growing food. So it just became this place that was just seeing so much turnover of, uh, of product and ingredients and volunteers, people coming through. So even, it was, even though it was in the height of the pandemic, um, people were coming together, wearing masks and, uh, and cooking together and putting food out. People were volunteering to uh, delivery drive. And some of the people that we served were um, domestic workers who were out of work, uh, United Here workers who were working at, um, at concessions in the stadiums. Uh, we served the, the Southeast Asian community with CMAC. Um, we served uh, the uh, a Baptist church here in Point Breeze. Um, we, were, we were sending food up every day to the encampment and a whole lot more. Um, it just became this kind of model that we just started running with that uh, we can bring um, the, the, the food to people um, and, and it has like a more political undertone. So some of the photos you see here is some of the food that we cook, some of the uh, ingredients that have been donated. Um, and we also started growing vegetables. Um, this, this woman here uh, um, that, that, was, that was cooking, that was a, a bake sale. Juanita was, uh, her, her family was um, undocumented and they were living in sanctuary inside a church. So she made um, a bunch of rum cakes, um, Jamaican rum cakes, and we sold them um, through the People's Kitchen. We, uh, uh, you can see the rum cake there. Um, she, she, she finally got asylum, which is great. Um, the, the other chef on the other side is uh, Chef Mani. He's from South India. He would come in on every Monday and make delicious curries. Uh, and the people kind of told us how much they like to get all the different multicultural foods because some, our chefs were from India, from Haiti, from Malaysia, from all over. And they were getting all different kinds of flavors that, that they never had. So there was like this high quality, good ingredient food that was going out completely for free. Um, and we really loved the project. Um, we're really excited about it. And uh, for us, it kind of became something more than um, a COVID response that like, how can we create this as a permanent restaurant? Like, like chef quality food, good ingredients and completely free. Like I've been in the restaurant industry for 15 years and we, we have a restaurant and the restaurant is a capitalist business. And, you know, you have to market your food and sell your food to people. And this kind of atmosphere of cooking is absolute creative freedom. Um, as I'll show you here with the stuff I'm making tonight that I don't have to uh, sell this to anybody or convince any food critic that is good or, or sell it to any people that's walking in the door, 
but we just can really cook from the heart, cook with good ingredients, cook with our creativity, and then give it away. And people appreciate it. And um, and that's really the, the 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 best reward from being a cook is that somebody eats your food and and appreciates it. And uh, the the other reward that we get from this place is that people really appreciate the concept of it and what we're what we're trying to make. Um, this past summer, we have uh, to take over. Um, 30 vacant lots in Southwest Philly, um, near where my house is. And these were just vacant lots that were tax delinquent, that were trash was being thrown on them. So my team uh, went up there, cleaned trash, um, brought in uh, good soil and planted seeds. Um, and we were, we were working out there four days a week over the summer. And we planted food that all the beds produced um, stuff for the neighborhood. Uh, so we were growing, we're, there's some beets, uh, there's squash, there's corn, there was um, all kinds of greens, uh, a lot of watermelon. Um, uh, we had, a, we had a, a, a ton of stuff. And the idea of it is that the neighbors can come and they can get whatever they want for free without even asking. There's no fences around or anything. But then everything else that's left goes into people's kitchen. Um, that's a really nice watermelon. That's some, some kids from the neighborhood in that photo. So being chefs, you know, we have a little bit extra uh, skills and knowledge with, with using ingredients, using the different parts of the plants, the roots, the stuff at different stages of growth as a micro or as a bolted flower. Um, and we're able to kind of use and glean all the stuff off of the farm that uh, that we're uh, we're like a, like a like a watermelon grind and uh, all kind of stuff so we we also been doing fermentation here and pickling and preserving making vinegars all this kind of stuff um, that picture here on the right is uh, is a mural that uh, Amber Ross just um, installed um, during our fall event uh, with a whole bunch of community members. Um, that's that's one wall that's adjacent to one of the lots that we took over that we're growing a bunch of vegetables in. And um, there was it was about 12 people out there painting the mural. And, you know, it, it was a beautiful event with, uh, you know, some some cooking over the open pit and, and eating a whole bunch of stuff out of the uh, that we grew. Um, bringing a lot of people together. Uh, on the on the left hand side is Jose. He's uh, wrapping up some of our uh, tropical fruit trees for the summer. There, right there is a uh, long gun and dragon fruit and uh, sorrel. Um, and that's that's part of what I'm cooking tonight. Um, as if you want to go through the rest of the slideshow, I will. Oh, question is, how were you able to secure a lot that we didn't secure anything? I mean, the only security is that uh, some of these people bought the lots and you can, and this stuff is all public knowledge. They bought the lot in 94 for a thousand bucks and they haven't paid taxes on it since then. And now they owe 30 grand in taxes. Like, all right, well, you come and pay your taxes. Like I'm happy to move my dirt, you know, but in the meantime, we're regenerating the soil, we're growing food. So we're not asking any permission. Uh, we're just doing it and we're, but, you know, consciously doing it with the, with the input and the buy-in from the neighbors and engagement with them. That's super important. Um, and so I'm just going to show you here what I got rocking and then I'll pass the mic back. Um, so got it a little staged up. This is a, a pot. I'm going to cook some monkfish. I'm going to braise some monkfish. There's some black beans stewing in there. This is some, uh, uh, locally grown organic polenta that was donated through uh, share that we had got, you know, about a few hundred pounds of it uh, a few months ago. And then over here, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to cook these greens, all these greens uh, we picked on Tuesday from the gardens. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll get more into that. So I'm really happy to be here and uh, thanks for having me. All right. So jumping from that, Ben, that was amazing. I loved every single second of that. Also the stuff with the lot, so cool, so cool. I feel like ask for, uh, what is it? Ask for forgiveness, not permission. 
I feel like, especially when it's community led like that, heck yes, that is so awesome. Um, so from that, we're going to jump into a little drawing activity um, where we are going to think about what you would like to bring to the table as a person. So if you were going to bring something to the table with the intention of sharing it with other folks, um, what would you want to bring? You know, I think it could be something that maybe that maybe a food that like you love so much and like to share it would like bring you joy. Um, a little bit of an example. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. Um, maybe to spark some inspiration. Um, for me, when I think of home, one of my favorite foods growing up is uh, an Egyptian dish. Well, it's it's Middle Eastern, North African in general. Um, a lot of places make it. It's called, uh, in Arabic, it's called wara anab, um, but it's like in Greek, it's called a dolma. Um, they're great leaves that are stuffed with like rice and sometimes meat, and they're like rolled up into these cute little guys. Um, and I love them as like a little kid. Oh, my favorite. And they take, they are a labor of love to make. When you're making it, it's like an all day event. Everybody is rolling them. And it's like, you only have so many of them, but they're so good. I love them. So that's what I'm going to draw today. Um, if you are someone that does not like to draw or you feel all anxious about it, you also don't have to. You are welcome to like write a few sentences about it. Um, we are going to draw for about three to five minutes. And then after that, we're going to give the space to y'all to be able to share if you would like. Um, you're also welcome to send the photos of the food that you draw to Linda tonight. She will add um, an email address in the chat, probably. <laughs> um, all right, let's get to drawing. Uh, you don't have to be fancy. I am definitely using some, some Crayola markers and just like a little notebook. Uh, but if all you have is a pen and a paper or a pencil and a paper, Work with what you got. Um, all right, Ben, if you wanna throw some music on. Uh, we on are to oh, Thank you. <laughs> Sweet Ben. Thank you. 
I want to get to, to sharing some of the things that y'all have made. Um, <laughs> Thank you so much, Ben, for the cute music. We loved it. Um, so I'm going to share mine first. Um, this is a very quick illustration, um, but it's a what it, it looks like. Uh, they're like these little, these little cute grape leaves that are rolled up real cute. I also wrote it on the bottom. I tried to write it in Arabic. I, it, it's kind of butchered, but I tried, you know. Um, all right, if anybody would like to share theirs next, please feel free, um, whether it be in the chat box. Um, I don't know if they're welcome to talk. Um, yeah. Yeah, if you anybody, can uh, go ahead and unmute yourself or raise your hand and we will uh, call on you. I would love to see some of y'all's drawings, but also if you're shy, that's okay. <laughs> Kathy, what did you make? I can't see what. I'm oh, sorry, I didn't have any markers. Oh, that's but it's okay. like it's like my favorite, one of my favorite meals, and it is a fillet fish. And um, well, actually, I like the bones, but a fish, um, a baked potato, wow. and a salad, mm. and then. In terms of my spirit, what I bring to the table is um, invitation to join me, mm. um, an open door, welcoming and supportive. Because I've had friends who have been going through some things and they have lived on my couch for more time than my family would have appreciated. But, you know, so um, I, th I think that those are the things I bring to the table. Heck yeah. Oh, thank you for sharing. <laughs> Would anyone else like to share? Jeremy, Jeremy, go ahead. Yeah. Hi, I've uh, I've been doing some volunteering with the fermentation lab at the People's Kitchen, and I also forage mushrooms. So I had found 
these baby oyster mushrooms the other day and tried to do a little sketch of those. Oh my gosh, so yummy! I thought I they. I just thought it would be great to get some of those to the kitchen and see what all those chefs can do with them. So much good stuff. Those are like some of the yummiest mushrooms. Heck yeah. Oh, thank you for sharing. Would anyone else like to share? Linda, I saw you drawing up a storm. <laughs> Yeah, um, I also see Diane shared in the chat and Diane said, what inspires me is my mom's home cooked meal and the love she invests into it. One of my favorite dishes growing up is a beef stew with crisp white rice, plantains, slices of avocado and East African chapati on the side. Mm. Now, I no longer eat meat regularly. It is something special I look forward to when I go home to visit. Oh, so sweet. Oh. Diane, did you want to share anything else? <laughs> okay, <laughs> so here's my drawing. I drew pastelillo. Some people call them pastelillo. Some people call them empanadas. But this is something that I used to make with my grandmother. And we used to crimp the edges with a fork and make the dough by hand and, you know, fill it with all kinds of good stuff, meat, olives, um, really yummy things. And I still make them today. I haven't made them in a while, but I used to make them for holidays and, and stuff them with vegetarian food, try and get my family to eat more vegetables. <laughs> I hear that. I love me and I'm Panala. You don't got to tell me. <laughs> um but would anyone else like to share um I'll share can you hear me yeah okay um peace everybody um my name's Jahan and I'm I was thinking about um drawing a picture I was drawing a picture of uh like zucchini bread or like carrot cake because I've definitely convinced some children like what carrot cakes and zucchini bread like I've definitely convince some children so I can imagine like that whole process of like growing and then turning it into something you know naturally yummy and a little sweet um and maybe that could be like a magic trick <laughs> but yeah so I'm I think that makes sense I feel like that's its own art form in a way <laughs> I'll share do it, let's do it. So I decided to first have, I went metaphoric with it. So I decided to have my hands as my first addition to any event because I'm there to help and experience. And then my face and third eye vision comes with a spiritual connection that then helps to feed my <laughs> mouth that is ultimately going to be there to enjoy the the culinary feast of, of the hopefully that we create. So this, this is like a a, a a a spiritual metaphor of of uh, what the food experience can embody. I love that. Heck yeah, you took it in a different direction, a little abstract. Um, all right. Unless anyone else would like to share, we can pass the the mic off to Ben, who's going to do a cool cooking demo, which I'm pretty excited to see. Great. Uh, so the cooking demo is, is more or less, um, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. um, the cooking demo here is more or less that uh, I'm just showing you where things are at in the process because I had to be working the whole time. So I was not exactly doing from scratch. I'm doing it from scratch right now, but um, I'll flip the camera here and show you what I've got going on. Uh, so in here, so I started that with um, water. I put some star anise in there to like uh, let it bloom a little bit. Um, the, the fermentation lab left me some uh, al dente black beans. They, we have made a, a, a black bean miso with uh, fermented koji. And we, they actually did a three sisters miso. So they did a, a black bean uh, miso that, that was uh, from black beans that we grew. A, a corn misa from the masa at barbacoa and a 
and a squash miso from some of the squash that we grew. So the, the three sisters are uh, squash, beans, and corn. Um, and these things grow, grow together in the garden and um, they support each other. The, 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 the long corn poles um, are what the beans climb up and the squash lives on the bottom and they all uh, take different nutrients from the ground and they put different nutrients back in. And it's, a, and it's an ecosystem and it's an example of how, of how biodiversity is strength um, and how as humans we can live together and gain things from each other uh, and, and give things to each other. That's, that's of our benefit. And I, you know, that's one of the, the beautiful things about this country and about Philadelphia is its diversity. Um, this here is some monkfish that I'm portioning up. Uh, that's gonna go in here with the beans. Um, there's also some coconut milk in there and some onions and garlic. So this is gonna be braised. The fish is gonna cook a little bit quicker. So that is gonna go in last. Right now I'm letting these greens cook down. Uh, these greens were all picked on Tuesday. Uh, but I, I think I mentioned that already. That's, that's getting cooked down with um, uh, garlic and onions, some salt, uh, put some white pepper, and then I'll add some uh, coconut milk in there a little bit. And then like after it's done cooking, I'll take some of the excess liquid out and add it into the fish. Um, and then the last thing I've got going here is this uh, uh, polenta. So uh, there's different kinds of corn, as people know. There's a uh, sweet corn, which we um, which we eat in the in the height of summer. And there's popcorn, which is uh, because the these are these are small kernels that have uh, a large endosperm, and like when they're uh, I'm sorry, a small endosperm, which is like the, the part that's inside the corn that, and then the, a larger pericap, which is like the harder shell. So that's why when you hit it with oil, it explodes into popcorn. And the, then or flint corn is dried on the cob and then shelled. And um, in the case of uh, my, my restaurant with my wife, we make masa with it by uh, slaking water with lime um, and it alkalinizes the water. We do the nixtamalization process and make masa, make tortillas. But if the corn is ground straight without being nixtamalized, uh, that's, that's where we can make uh, polenta or gruel. So I just, uh, this is just, you know, some oil and water and salt. And I'm just letting that uh, cook for about 40 minutes. Um, and then, so like, if you can visualize how the dish is gonna go, there's gonna be the, uh, the polenta. Then with some cooked greens on top, then I'm gonna hit it with some, um, some nice pieces of fish on top of that. That's already like cooking in uh, beans and coconut oil. I'll, I think I have to add a little bit of spicy stuff in there too. That's gonna be good. Um, and then the last thing I'm gonna put on top as a garnish, this is um, a watermelon rind kimchi. And what, what we did was uh, we grew a lot of watermelon this year and um, the, at the end of the season, the, the, we were starting to get cold weather, the watermelons stopped growing, um, but some of them didn't come to full maturity. So some of these watermelons were green. So most people are not gonna wanna eat a watermelon that's not red inside, that's, that's not fully ripe. But what we were able to do is, uh, is, is, is salvage all this uh, good watermelon flesh and do all this different kind of stuff with it. So um, I cooked uh, some of the, the watermelon rind as, um, as curries. We made pickles with it. We made vinegar with it. And in this case, we made a, a, a kimchi, which was, uh, which was made back in December. It's a nice and spicy thing. And that's gonna be like a garnish on top of the dish. So like, uh, as you can see, like, most of all of these ingredients were either grown or donated. Oh, shout out to Small World Seafood who don who do been don donating fish for us for about a year. He's been giving us all these beautiful fish and it's really exciting. Um, um, so shout out to them. But as you can see, like it's with good quality ingredients. It's a nice, well thought out dish. And this is the kind of food that we've been uh, consistently serving out for the community for free, you know, that we think is like, something that could be on a, a menu at a restaurant. Oh, and we have a dessert. We have a few desserts that uh, Christina sent over from Casa Mexico. That's like a gelatina. 
uh, and some yogurt with some fruit. So we're gonna put all that up at the same time. That's pretty much what I got going on right now. Awesome. And Ben, you said this is all gonna be available for free, right? All these meals are gonna be free to the public yeah. and available tonight, right? Yeah, yeah. As soon as it's finished cooking, which is probably gonna be in about 20, 30 minutes, I'm gonna package it all up and put it on the table right outside of uh, the restaurant with the little sign, this is free, tells people what it is. And uh, it generally goes pretty quick. People, you know, get a nice surprise, uh, tasty meal. You know, we, we usually cook in like, lunchtime dinner time sort of stuff and this is a little bit later so we're going to catch some some people that are you know that that haven't eaten yet maybe coming home from work or whatever that's that's what it's for so anybody that's in south philly welcome to come grab a plate and tell us your exact location so that anybody on this call if you get hungry right after we get off the call you can stop by yeah we're at we're on 9th street in south philly between federal and ellsworth uh, the address is 1149 South 9th. Awesome. Well, we have a couple minutes, so I just want to see if anyone has any questions or anybody has anything that they want to share before we end our second workshop. And we will have a third workshop in January. I, I would just like to comment and thank and congratulate everybody that was on this call. But part, part of the part of the journey and the mission of this project and the conversation is to expand our our realities in terms of uh, access and 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 you know some of the struggles that exist in a major metropolis like Philadelphia. We all have to do our part and. The amazing thing, of course, you know, we're in the thick of it is that artists immerse themselves in these type of stories and advocacy all the time. And, and unless you're part of the, the profession, you don't always realize that artists just aren't sitting in their studios creating a lot of times, and it's historically the, the case, they attach themselves to the most important of social causes, using the vitality of, of art and creation and creativity and culture as the ultimate communication weapon. And it's the ultimate means of communication. And so artists have their part to play. That's why each one of us are taking part in this project and attaching ourselves to this issue is because like, we know that we're able to bring something ridiculously important to the table and, for, and, and as a way of informing people and, and, and pushing the meter of the conversation. So artists, are always there to uh, ideally be a part of social causes. And everybody on the call today are amazing practitioners and artists that have a social line and thread that is as relevant as, as, as anything going. So I just wanna applaud everybody's efforts and you know, just know that there's more to come. This work is gonna be cumulative, meaning that each workshop is gonna build upon itself till we get to the point of the, the, the outcomes and when we get to a point of a design, people are gonna be invited to be able to come and take part of the painting process as well. So it's, it's gonna be a very open and sincere process that we invite you all to take part in and continue. You know, it's like, this is a continuation of a thread. Share resources, be part of the conversation and know that people in Philadelphia during these coldest months are suffering and go without food. So that is the problem that we're all here to address. There is one question in the uh, chat uh, from Sarah saying, what are some things that go over well in community fridges? I feel like when I think about like what should go in the community fridge, um, I think it needs to like go beyond the conversation of non-perishables. So I think like a lot of like food, food drives and stuff, people like, oh, let me get canned goods and like definitely important and all things that you can cook with always. But I think when we think about like donating things, like what would you want to eat? Like, what do you think is really yummy? And like, go buy that and bring that to the fridge. Um, obviously there's like the basic necessities of just like fruits and veggies and things like that. But like, 
good produce and like, or like, even if you go to a bakery and you're like, oh, like, let me get some extra stuff and like put it in the fridge. That would, I'm sure make someone's day as well, you know? So thinking about like, what's nutritious, but also like, what, what would you want, you know? Yeah, um, and then to just uh, put it to a point of action, you know, I, I know that all the, the fridges that I see in my neighborhood and around the, the city, like as soon as people put stuff in it, it's almost like there's people, you know, waiting to see what got put in it. And the stuff gets snatched so fast that, you know, you don't gotta worry like, oh, if I put this in, it, it, how long is it gonna last? It's just realize that it's gonna go to somebody who needs it and it's not gonna push the point of not lasting. You know, it, it will it will be consumed uh, probably within the, the, the 24 hours that you put it in. So there's really no limit as long as you can fit. And you know, um, can you hear me okay? And I'll, and then um, even to add on to all that too, um, thinking to, and it's great to have a full spectrum of mutual aid as well because the the the, the community gardens, I mean, the community fridges are great for people who can you know, who live in that vicinity where they can actually walk to that fridge and like carry that stuff to their house and actually prepare those products. And then you have the people like yourselves with the, with the kitchen who are already preparing those meals for people just to grab and heat up because, you know, in another spectrum, for example, myself, like I can sometimes can't even stand to prepare food, you know? So it's like, you know, I appreciate that other spectrum where people are expanding, you know, what, what their lane of health is. And then also to, to your point here about, you know, how artists attach themselves to um, social issues, but also in a mindset like, you know, a different mindset, like, well, I personally, as an artist, don't uh, separate myself from the people I serve with my art. And, but, you know, but there are some people who are advocates of the scenario, but really separate themselves from the people that they engage with and I think that's something that artists you know I, I, I you know so I think that that's something that artists can really um yeah bring to the table so thank you for for, for all of this and I look forward to next steps I think that was a very good point uh, I agree with that totally I've been in some groups um or talked to some folks who have done exactly what you said, separated themselves and talked about them and not us. So, you know, thank you for sharing that. So I think we're good. Linda and Kelly, you guys want to close us out? I want to just say one, uh, one thing um, while I have a second is that uh, uh, the the People's Kitchen, um, if, if people are interested in, in volunteering, um, either doing doing fermentation, doing farming, doing gardening, um, our, uh, cooking, um, you can get in touch with us on our uh, Instagram and we'll respond to you on there. Um, thank you. Um, I'll put the Instagram in the chat. Let's see. People's Kitchen. It's People's Kitchen Philly, right? At People's Kitchen Philly. So definitely, um, if you're interested in getting involved, hit them up. They're doing a ton of stuff, always busy. And um, yeah, we love to support the work that they're doing. And anybody who's in South Philly, if you swing by tonight, you can grab a, a meal that Ben has prepared and showed us on screen. Really appreciate both Ben and Simone for sharing their time and sharing their work and just showing how art is a way that we can talk about these issues and how we as artists, um, we, we create work that is really, to speak to these issues, but also to generate a conversation. So a lot of times we're not creating work that that is an answer. Sometimes the work itself is asking a question and it's really asking for 
community response um, and really just asking you to think about these issues. So um, thank you everyone. Thank you everyone who shared with us tonight. If you have drawings or you draw something later and you wanna share it with us, you can email it to us at designamber215 at gmail.com and join the next workshop on January 20th at 6 p.m. And I also added a link in the chat to our list of resources that we generated during the first workshop. And this is a list of resources for food access and food sovereignty. So please feel free to check it out, add some more, and hopefully we'll see you all in January. Happy holidays, everyone. And looking forward to seeing you all in the new year.